Let's talk about the second to the last pace. You're almost done. Geometry 1119. <clears throat> this pace has a lot of formulas in it, again. And uh, these relate to figures like uh, the formula for drawing lines, the formula to find the midpoint of a line segment, or to find the length of a line segment if you know two coordinates on the graph. <clears throat> also, there was a formula for circles. Um, it's my understanding from uh, Mr. Root, who again has taken a lot of students through here, that the formulas for the midpoint, most students don't have too much trouble using that formula. And same with the distance formula, that's based on Pythagorean's theorem. So at first glance, it looks complicated. You know, the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And that sounds complicated when you see where it comes from and uh, see how to plug into it. Most students find it's actually pretty easy. And, and it's, believe it or not, even the formula for the circle is fairly easy. The two areas we want to talk about for this pace that uh, tend to trip students up are the equations for a line. First of all, slope, and then the equation of a line. And so let's try to review that. And actually, if you did Algebra 1, uh, you did cover this. It just has been a while, OK? And uh, it's a good time to have a review of this. Or if this is your first introduction to it, I'll try to make it as simple as possible. All right? So if we have a line, and I'm taking it through these two points here, 3, 4, and down here, negative 1, negative 2. And I've drawn a line. I should have used a ruler. It's not very straight. The steepness of this is called the slope, OK? I don't know if you do skiing in the country where you live or the area where you live, but this here would be a fairly steep slope. Or if you were hiking, this would be a steep slope to have to hike up. And the higher we get, ugh, the bigger the number, OK? Whereas if we lay it more like this, it's a more shallow slope. And all of these going this direction are considered a positive slope. So from left to right, you're climbing up, OK? So this is a steep slope to drive up or to hike up. If I had a line coming this direction, coming downhill, we call that a negative slope, OK? So again, we could have a steep slope. We could have a shallow slope. But it would be going from left to right downhill. <clears throat> so it would be a negative slope. All right. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. It's easy to you know, visualize it and realize, OK, if it's going uphill, I know it's got to be a positive slope, downhill, negative slope. But how can I get the actual value for the slope? When I'm teaching my students, I first have them sketch it. This is early, in the early stages, OK? And then make a triangle out of these points. And then figure out, what is this length here? So this is 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I have 2 this direction and 4 above the x-axis. So the height is 6. So we would say that the slope, and any textbook that you look at will express it this way, the rise over the run, OK? So the rise is the up and down part, and the run is going this direction. So in this case, the slope would be 6 over 4, which when you reduce that would be 3 over 2, OK? So that's one way to do it, is if you have it, you could graph the points, make a triangle, figure out the rise over the run. But sometimes they are going to give us numbers that are harder to graph, or maybe impossible to graph. And uh, there needs to be a formula, OK? Mathematicians love formulas, so let's get a formula together to um, solve for the slope. So rise is the change on the y-axis. So we call this the change in y, triangle y, delta y. That's actually the Greek letter delta, which means the change in y over the change in x. So the change in y is the same as rise. Change in x is the same as run. Now, in order to solve this, we need to have a formula that even goes further and tells me which numbers to plug in. Well, the change in y is the second number here. 
Because remember, in any point, we have x and then y, okay? I'm going to call this the second point, x2, y2. I'm going to call this one x1, y1. Interestingly, it doesn't matter which one, okay? You could make this one x1, y1, this one x2, y2. That's fine. As long as you keep the first number matching up with the x and the second one matching up with y. Now, let me show you what this formula would look like here. Change in y would be like saying y2 minus y1. Change in x says I'm going to take x2 and subtract x1. Now, it's important that I do this in this order and not flip it and say x1 minus x2, or I'm going to have the, the sign of the slope wrong, okay? So, y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. Now, let's find the numbers because I have four numbers here. x1 is negative 1, okay? y1 is negative 2, x2 is 3, y2 is 4. All right, you see where I got all those numbers? 3 and 4, the negative 1, negative 2. And uh, I don't know if you hear that bell in the background, but I'm making these videos on a snow day. We're getting a blizzard in March. And uh, so that's the lunch bell. But I'm going to keep working. All right, here we go. <clears throat> now I'm going to plug in these numbers. So y2 is 4 minus y1. I've got to be careful about signs here, minus negative 2. x2 is 3 minus, be careful about the sign here, plug in negative 1. Okay? Now I can do the math. 4 minus negative 2. Remember we change subtraction to addition and change the second number to its opposite. So I get 6. 3 minus negative 1 it means I'm actually going to add positive 1, so I'll get 4. When I reduce that, I get 3 over 2. Hey, same answer I got before, okay? 6 over 4 reduced is 3 over 2. I'm not going to go through and prove to you, but you can check it out. If you reversed this and made this point 2 and made this point 1 and switched these numbers, you would get exactly the same slope, all right? So that's just for finding the slope. Now let's talk about the equation of the entire line, all right? <clears throat> Once I know that this line is going through the point 3 um, or has the slope 3 over 2, that if I use the slope intercept form, I could plug in here for m. m represents the slope, okay? And then B represents where it crosses the, so I'm going to label this here, slope. And this is where it crosses the y-axis. Intercept the <coughs> y-intercept. So I'm going to put a different line up here because this particular line is going to cross at a fraction, and I don't want to do that. So let's illustrate. <clears throat> if I had a line that went through like this, and I wanted to figure out what is the equation of this line, I could take this form right here, the slope-intercept form, look at the graph, and see that, oh, it crosses down here at negative 2 on this y-axis, okay? Remember, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So I could take the equation y equals mx plus b. In place of b, I'm going to plug in negative 2. That's where it crosses the y-axis. Now I've got to figure out what is the slope. Again, by looking at the graph, I'm looking for rise over run. So if I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, okay? That tells me that the rise over run is 2 over 1. And notice it's in the positive direction. It's going uphill. So I can plug in 2 in place of m. Now I need to keep the y and I need to keep x. So the form is y equals 2x minus 2. 
So just by looking at a graph, we can quickly come up with this form of the line, all right? Now, what if I <clears throat> have an equation and I want to graph it real quick? So let's say I have y equals negative one-third x and plus, mm, plus five, okay? Now, actually, I need to put another line up here. So that it, this tells me that it's going to cross the y-axis at positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's going to be my starting point. Negative tells me I'm going to take the slope down and then over. So it's down 1 and then over 3. 1, 2, 3. And then down one more and over 3. Connect the dots, and I've drawn the equation of the line. Isn't that easy? The slope-intercept form is, is like the greatest formula for lines because it's very easy to uh, go either from the line to this equation or to go from this equation and put it into a line. Now let's talk about what if the equation is given to us instead as like 2x minus y equals 3, and I'm asked to graph this. This is in what's called the standard form. Notice how there's a number in front of x, there's a number in front of y, and then there's a number over here on the other side of the equal sign. So this is the standard form. <clears throat> I need to first rework it to get into this form. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides, so I get negative y equals negative 2x plus 3, but that's not what this is. This needs to be positive y in order to use a slope-intercept form. So I'm going to divide everything by negative 1, so y equals 2x minus 3. And that would be easy to graph. Okay, let's do it real fast here. 1, 2, 3, this would be my starting point, and then the slope is positive 2, which I could say is the same as 2 over 1. So rise over run means I go up 2 over 1. Up 2 over 1. It's positive, so I'm going uphill. Okay. And we're done. Wonderful. Easy to use, the slope-intercept form. There's uh, one other important thing we need to talk about, and that is what if the equation is given, um, or we, get, we have it in the slope-intercept form, and I want to put it into standard form. So let's say I have y equals negative one-third x minus two. <clears throat> to get it into standard form, I need to bring the one-third x to the other side. So switch sides, switch signs and then equals, I leave the negative 2 on this side, so I brought this to the other side, I added it over here. Notice the x comes first, and then the y, okay, and then the constant. But the last thing in order to get it in standard form is I cannot have a fraction in front of any of these. So I have to, if there is a fraction, I've got to get the common denominator and multiply through, so in this case I'm multiplying the whole equation by 3. And when I distribute that out, I'm going to get 1x plus 3y equals negative 6. So these are equivalent forms. Actually, all of these are the same. This is the slope-intercept form of that equation. And this one is the standard form. All right? We could work it in reverse if we started with this. We could easily come up with this by subtracting 1x from both sides and then divide everything by 3, and all of a sudden you have this form, which is easy to graph. Okay? I hope this uh, video is helpful and that maybe it reminds you of some of the things that you did learn. Uh, as you continue working through the pace, a lot of formulas make cue cards, but don't rely on the cards for doing your tests. You should memorize them and uh, be confident in using them and knowing which numbers to plug in.